What up, cappers, gamblers, punters? What up, sleuths? Who have stopped calling me because I have no fucking money? What up, mama? What up, baseball fans? It is, I don't know, fucking Tuesday. Tuesday, I guess. I've lost track of time. I'm not sleeping well. I have big bags under my eyes. I'm wearing ratty fucking t-shirts because I'm on a fucking losing streak. Well, not a, really a fucking streak because I hit on Sunday, but I'm losing a lot of fucking money. And I'm angry. And I need to shower and shave. Stop sitting in my own fucking filth. Start believing in myself. Get some fucking wins. Football season is almost here. Hockey season starts beginning of October. Basketball beginning of November. Breeders' Cup beginning of November. There's going to be lots of opportunities to make some fucking cash. So I got to stay strong. Stay focused. Study. Believe in myself. Fuck. If you see a liquidy substance forming around my eyes, those aren't tears. The bag doesn't cry. What you're seeing is a backup of sperm. The bag isn't getting emptied on a regular basis like I'm used to. As I've said many times before, I'm not Brad Pitt. I need my pockets full if I want my sack to be empty. And I just don't know what to do. I'm not used to being this full of sperm. As I said, the pressure is building behind my eyeballs and I can't think straight. It's a compounding issue. If I can't think straight, I can't make good picks and I don't get my sack emptied and the pressure builds more and more, making it even harder and harder to fucking think straight. Maybe you guys have some suggestions for me. One thought I had was that there are some ladies out there who owe the bag and they would be the mothers of Bartolo Colon, Doug Fister, and Jordan Zimmerman. If you are out there listening, ladies, and you are wondering who is responsible for your sons turning their terrible seasons around, the person is the bag. You can now watch your sons play again, thanks to the fact that I've been fading them and the betting gods are angry at me for some reason, maybe because I had such a good June. I don't know, but they're obviously pissed at me and have returned the power of great pitching to those pitchers that I fade. So to Miss Fister, Miss Cologne, and Miss Zimmerman, you owe me. Especially you, Miss Cologne. If you look anything like your son, you owe me an emptying. Now the bag is normally into the mature ladies, but these are desperate times. And the pressure behind my eyes is just too great. I've been on Pornhub the last few days watching mature videos, trying to psych myself up for this. I used to watch the Golden Girls when I was younger, and I'd always think to myself, what would it be like to stick it in that old slut, Blanche? And now I'm ready. So Miss Fister, Miss Cologne, Miss Zimmerman, call me. Let's arrange a meeting. I'm responsible for your boys returning to greatness. I did you that favor, and just like the mob, I'm now calling in that favor. I need to be emptied. A sap! For fuck's sakes. Clearly what I'm doing of late has not been working. Many people disagreed with my parlay strategies and have been proven right over the last couple months. I'm not above saying that I was wrong. I know this two-month swoon has a lot of you questioning my skill. I get it. I'm fucking losing and not sleeping. I have a little bit of this season left, and I'm going to try to get out of this hole that I have dug. All through my career, I've been able to find a way to get out of these fucking holes, and I believe in myself that I can do this now. In saying that, I have three parlays today. I'm taking Washington at home over Miami at minus 160. It's Edwin Jackson versus Vance Worley. Edwin Jackson's 4-3 with a 3.38 ERA and a 1.35 whip. 2-1 with a 1.89 ERA in his last three starts. Since joining the rotation after the All-Star break, he's been a re revelation. He's been pitching so well. His average exit velocity is 86.2 miles per hour with an expected batting average of 234. These numbers are easily above MLB averages. Not bad for a guy who's on his 12th MLB team. Trey Turner will be activated tonight, and Jason Worth got back yesterday, and they're going up against Vance Worley. Okay? I've watched Vance Worley pitch so often over the years. He's 2-3 and three with a 5.70 ERA and a 1.53 whip. He stepped into the rotation July 28th. In his second and third starts of the year, he completely shut down this national squad, allowing one earned run over 13 innings. I have faded Worley constantly over the years. I've always felt 
that he wasn't good enough to be a starting pitcher in this league. In AAA this year, he was 2-5 with a 4.43 ERA and a 1.43 whip. He was exposed last out, allowing eight earned runs in four innings. I think he will be exposed again. Now, I know what he did to the Nats in the beginning of August. Sometimes you have to forget what you have just seen. And I'm going to forget those two starts. I believe Worley will get touched. Jackson will put in a good effort, and the Nationals will win this game. The idea that you're getting the Nats at home at minus 160 is not a bad number because they're a good team. They're good at home. They've got excitement and energy in the clubhouse. They've got Trey Turner probably batting leadoff, playing second out there. I like this action. I'm tying that with the Cubs at home over the Pirates at minus 210. I also have one parlay with the under eight at minus 115. It's Jake Arrieta. Jake Arrieta versus Jad Cool. Arrieta is 13 and eight with a 3.49 ERA, 1.20 WHIP. In his past eight, he's five and one with a 1.78 ERA. And that goes. Those are exactly the numbers he had in his Cy Young um, year when he had a 1.77 ERA. He's pitching like that guy again. He's not allowed more than two runs in any of those eight starts. Only guy you can hit off him is Josh Bell, 6 for 11. Other than that, Marte, 8 for 29. Jaso, 5 for 27. Harrison, 2 for 23. Freeze, 4 for 22. Mercer, 3 for 18. Going up against Chad Cool, 6 and 9, with a 4.52 ERA and 1.45 whip. He has a 3.30 ERA in his last 11 outings after recording a 5.58 ERA in his first 15. He's been very bad in Chicago, 0 and 3 with a 3.0. 13, sorry, with a 13.20 ERA and five career starts for Chicago, but he's pitching better. He's pitching strong right now. And I know he didn't look that good against the Dodgers five days ago, but I think he will pitch well. And I have one of my parlays tied with the under. The other game I am taking is I also have the under in the Reds at home versus the Mets. Uh, that line has changed drastically. It was plus 100, now minus 115 on bet 365. It's Sal Romano. Versus Chris Flexen. Romano's 3 and 5 with a 4.96 ERA, 1.54 whip. His past two starts, Romano has allowed only three earned runs through 14 innings with five walks and 10 Ks. He's pitching very well. He's a stud. I think he's going to be, I mean, he's a big boy, and I think he's going to be a big pitcher in this league. Going up against Chris Flexen, these are two 23 year old rookies pitching against each other. Flexen's 3 and 2 with a 5.79 ERA, 1.93 whip. He looked good last outing versus Arizona, allowing only two earned runs over six innings. He's not allowed over three runs in, in his last four starts. And no batter on either team has faced either Romano or Flexen. I like the under in this because the Reds' bats aren't hitting. And the Mets' lineup is fucking awful without Cespedes and Conforto. Uh, I love Brandon Nemo at the top of the order. He's playing well. But other than that, they're just they're a weak, weak lineup. So here are my parlays. I got a $300 parlay. Washington, Chicago at plus 138. I have a $100 parlay, Washington, Chicago, and the Mets versus Reds under 10 at plus 348. And I have a $100 parlay, Cubs and Cubs versus Pittsburgh under 8 at plus 175. That is my action, man. Let me know what you're up to today. Hit me on uh, the SBR forum. Let me know what you got going on or hit me at Jimmy the Bag on Twitter. Other than that, man, uh, let's get that cash. I need rest, and I only get rest when I have wins. Let's get a fucking win tonight, man. I'm going to hit the fucking bottle hard if shit goes awry. It's about the only thing I have left in this fucking apartment. Empty fridge and a big fucking bottle of liquor ready for me to fucking hammer if things go fucking south again for me. You heard me, Miss Cologne, Miss Zimmerman, Miss Fister. God, it's a pretty name, Miss Fister. You're going to fucking get it, man, because I need to be empty. I need to be empty. And if you're a tall drink of water like your son, you're going to fucking get it.